Okay, this video is going to be photosynthesis by Hunter Skronsky. Um, the equation, or general equation, um, is carbon dioxide plus water plus light energy yields glucose and oxygen gas. The requirements are water from the xylem, carbon dioxide from the stomata, sunlight um, from the pigments, chlorophyll A, B, and carotenoids, um, NADPH, ATP, chlorophyll, which would be A, B, and C again. Wow. Um, the chloroplast structure consists of an inner membrane and outer membrane. Um, granum, which are um, the st stacks of uh, thylakoids. Um, and those are individual thylakoids. Um, and then in the area between is the stroma where the Kelvin cycle takes place. The thylakoid membrane consists of the phospholipid bilayer all the way around, the lumen in the center, um, the inner and outer membrane, photosystem 2 which consists of photosystem which consists of chlorophyll B and carotenoids around the active area where chlorophyll A is, um, protein, phospholipid bilayer, um, integral proteins, uh, more proteins, and then photosystem 1, which consists of um, chlorophyll B and carotenoids in the area around the active site where um, chlorophyll A is, and then the short ETC um, in this area, long ETC in this area. The NADP reductase phase right here, phospholipid bilayer, up to the ATP synthase, um, where ADP plus A phosphate um, makes ATP, and back in um, to the phospholipid bilayer, and it repeats itself. The um, pigments. Um, chlorophyll B absorbs more blue and less red light, ass assists in capturing um, light and taking in and transfers um, to A and it is also necessary. Um, carotenoids absorbs blue and little green light um, and transfers energy to B and A. So that's different than B. Um, let's see, chlorophyll A. absorbs less blue light but more red light and is directly involved in the light reduction reaction excuse me of photosynthesis um, the electron transport system starts off after the Kelvin cycle goes through proteins through a protein um, into in then FADH passed through um, two including itself and then NADH can pass through three including itself. Um, the transition takes two ATP, the um, glycolysis, no, what would that be? Yeah, glycolysis takes two and then um, glucose takes six. Um, for NADH there's three ATP FADH, there's two ATP, and then double that. Well, that's sorry, that's FADH two, which should equal four because there's two for each one. Um, and that'd be thirty, and then total there is thirty-four ATP, which is sixty-six percent effective. Okay, next to be talked about is the light reactions. Um, it happens in the thylakoid, which I talked about earlier. Um, the reaction center is an area of the photosystem where chlorophyll A reacts. Um, let's see, light absorption, um, again, comes from the chlorophyll B 
and the cratinoids, or, yeah, cratinoids. And then next, the splitting of water. Um, what is the role of water in light reaction? It splits into oxygen, which combines with a second oxygen and goes out of the cell through the stomata. Um, H plus accumulates in the lumen funnels through the ATP synthase to eventually produce ATP. Electrons travel to photosystem 2, um, then goes through the electron transport system to photosystem 1 and eventually produce ATP. Water comes in from the roots through the xylem and splits O2. Oh, and splits. O2 is given off through the stomata as a waste product, which is a major uh, key factor. Uh, protons, which is H or hydrogen, are accumulated inside the lumen. <coughs> Excuse me. And electrons go to post-system 2. Chlorophyll A transfers energy to the electrons, which go to an electron acceptor through an extragonic reaction. They travel from photosystem 2 to photosystem 1, getting weak as they move down the ETC because they are pulling in extra hydrogen protons. And then through that, which would be active transport, they lose energy. Um, let's see what else. Um, photophosphorization, which is the carrying of protons into the lumen, or chemiosmosis, the creation of ATP. Uh, when they get into photosystem 1, they are weak again, but chlorophyll A transfers energy again and allows the electrons to enter a small electron transport system, which leads to the NADP plus reductase to create NADPH. Uh, everything that has been well, I shouldn't say everything, but through the NADP uh, reductase cycle, all those products go into the Kelvin cycle. Okay, uh, next to be talked about is the Kelvin cycle. And as you can see here, the Kelvin cycle um, in a picture form. Um, instead of explaining that, I'm going to just go through step one through step six with little details in between. Step one, three CO2 enter and combine with three REBP, which is a five compound, five carbon compound, creating a short-lived six carbon molecule using an enzyme called Rubisco. Step two, C mole carbon molecule immediately splits into two three carbon and one phosphate molecule called PGA this would make six PGA molecules for each PGA adds a phosphate from ATP reducing ATP to ADP and creating six biphosphoglycrit Step four, then six NADPH come and remove phosphate and add a hydrogen and and electrons. The molecule reconfigures to make six G3P. One G3P goes out of the Kelvin out of the cycle. Excuse me, to make one half. Um, of a carb, which would be either a lipid, a fat, or protein. Um, other, <coughs> excuse me, 5 G3P continues in the cycle. 3 ATP is added to the 5 G3P to convert um, back to RUBP. To make one molecule of G3P, the following is needed 3 molecules of CO2, 3 molecules of RUBP, which is the 5 carbon compound and uh, nine molecules total. Um, most plants fix carbon through the Kelvin cycle and are called C3 plants. Uh, and they fix 
oh, plants in general, um, fix carbons by other means. Uh, the G3P is made in the Kelvin cycle. It, the, wow. The G3P, um, made in the Kelvin cycle is involved in the biosynthesis of the organic molecules G3P can be made into a lipid carb or protein um like now um like the rate temperature and so on and so forth or factors that affect photosynthesis um the rate um it is actively is activity per unit of time um factors are water concentration light intensity carbon dioxide concentration um, temperature and oxygen concentration would be CO2, H2O, and light energy. Um, and then in this graph here, um, your x axis or y, y axis is your rate, and then your x axis is your light intensity or CO2 concentration. And it goes up at a steady rate, and then eventually, once it hits its peak, it um, continues at a flat rate. The photosynthesis rate related to the temperatures um, as here you can see on the right same as the last graph um, the rate and then on the bottom or the x-axis the temperature in um, Celsius um, from 0 to 40 it hits its peak at 25 and then drops to 40 a little over 40 um, and it continues to increase until it is too much and uh, stops at one rate. Um, oxygen's effect and how it takes place um, goes into the rubisco to make the uh, PGA and then uh, G3P and the RUBP is formed from that. Um, and it is slow and not very effective. Um, and instead of having to go around twice as go around four times the O2 concentration on your x axis and on your y axis the rate of photosynthesis um, it actually decreases and um, here is the earth's atmosphere level of carbon dioxide and it drops even lower than that and continues onward at a flat rate. Um, photorespiration, um, the overall rate of photosynthesis decreases and why is because you don't need, um, because you don't create two PGA for every RUBP combined with CO2, you only create one PGA and a two carbon compound. Hence, the cycle must work twice as hard to get one G3P, which in terms slow and not effective. Um, conditions for phosphorization have to be hot, dry, sunny. What happens to the stomata under such conditions? They close. Um, solutions would be C4 plants, um, such as um, grasses which use the bundle sheath, um, can plants use thyme which would be like cacti, um, 